time to go on a fucking picnic is what I thought. These were sick. I would take all of these on a picnic, that's great. I actually, uh... Fucking most gangster picnic I've ever been on. All right, another edition of Blind Wine Tasting. Uh, we have another six wines to try, sourced to us by our beautiful, generous, and kind-hearted friends at Sometimes Always. We don't know anything about the wines. We don't know variety, we don't know brand, we don't know price, we don't know anything. All we're here to do is determine if they're delicious or not and whether we think you should buy them. If you want a discount code for any of the wines we try today, check the link below, enter our Discord channel, and you can get 10% off anything. Uh, and if you would like to like and subscribe, as annoying as it is, and as much as I personally don't like saying it, liking and subscribing to the channel is a massive support to what we do. If you want to keep us doing this, that's the way to best support us. So without too much mucking around, let's do it again. Let's, let's fucking taste some wine! I'm tasting third this week, and Brendan and Noah have just gone before me and come out and said, wow, that was really good, which means I'm probably gonna hate all of these. Or not, we'll find out. It looks like a little natty boy, you know, and it's a little bit cloudy, faded rim, already thinking, could probably be like Gamay, Grenache, Pinot, you know. I personally enjoy the look of a wine like this because it's it screams flavor and refreshment all at once. Already, like bang, going straight up on my list because if it smells so, rem like with crystalline expression, exactly what it's meant to be, like it can't lose, it can't lose. It's, it's done job fucking number one. Yummy. Sour, fruity, doesn't have the harsh finish to it. This is the wine when I'm like, wine's like this, I want it to be more like that. This is the that. I reckon, like, I reckon Henry might really dig this because it is just like light, bright and easy drinking without too much mucking around. Natty, red, juice. Uh, usually things like this end up being some weird like grenache blend with Pinot Gris or something like that. But yeah, really cool. Uh, I want, yeah, I want four bottles and I, I'd like to pay a flat 40 for this. That is remarkably well-crafted. I have not got Grenache right once yet on this show, I don't think. Um, I can't wait to see this and maybe like when we come back and taste it, because I'm the first person in the lineup of what we kind of do, um, the way we film it. So I'm really excited to try this when we get back in the room because it might have really just developed and opened up in the glass because they, there might be some pedigree here. But right now, Four bottles for me. Pretty cool though. Number two. Cold blooded. This this is this looks huge. Wow, dense. A lot of power. A lot of dense. Like we're talking chocolate cake density. This is uh, yeah, black forest cake all the way through. Oak is like I, I want to say it's heavy handed. Yeah, like smoky seafood. It's cool. A little bit of tannin, which I'm coming around to. I, tannin used to be an instant ick for me, but not anymore, I'm into this. Something that Brendo said a few times about wines like this is like a black olive tapenade type, type deal. Look, it's a big boy, it's a wintry red. I reckon it's a it's a Syrah, Shiraz kind of thing. I reckon it might be old world, just because the level of acidity for this level of ripeness, you don't really get for Shiraz in Australia, um, unless it's like top quality stuff from the Adelaide Hills. Damn, that's beautiful. You know, it's beautiful, pristine. I think this would mature incredibly well with looking, uh, you know, bright plums, red fruited. It is, I can understand why Noah took so long tasting through the wines now because like, I would want to spend a lot of time with this wine. 80 bucks, I want to buy 12. Sorry, Laura, I'm spending a lot of money this week. That's a really good wine. Moving on, another dense, dark little boy. What do we got here? Why are they all little boys? cut that. It's more in the category of wine number two in terms of colour. It's got that little bit of darkness to it. Maybe a little bit lighter. When you first start drinking wine, you're like, why do people swirl it? The answer is because it's fun. Like, that's why I do this. It is really fun to just throw these things around. The Royal Tannin Bombs. Uh, this smells like Cabernet. This feels like a cool little Bordeaux blend. Warmer climates, so I'm thinking if it's Australian, it'll be somewhere from like the Barossa or somewhere like that. It's got a little bit of spice and heat to it. A winemaker that is paying respect to heritage and tradition, but is just tweaking it and making it a little bit more contemporary um, and throwing off the lashings of oak of, of days gone by and really it's just narrowly focusing down on just being like perfecting this, this, this art and style. Got to give this thing mad love because there is some really cool dried fruit complexity here. I think this this will age beautifully. It's There's no doubt about it, it is a cracking example of wine. Is it my favorite thing in the world? No, respect where respect is due, and this will age fantastically. Lockie, what do we know about wines that are watery in color? Riesling. This is not Riesling, not a chance. This is great Chardonnay. 
No, it's definitely Chardonnay. I'm in my head now because I've got I've lost my little track on Chardonnay a little bit lately. But this has got all of the characteristics. It's got the oak, and that's about all I can smell on it. <laughs> Down the path of being too sort of oaky. Even there's not a lot of oak, there's not a lot of other stuff going on in the nose, which I actually really appreciate, especially for Chardonnay, and you can easily overdo it. It's the palette that draws it back a little bit for me. It's a little bit too dense, a little bit too ripe. I'd hazard, I guess this is maybe a little local number. You know when you cook meat and it's got like a lot of fat on it and you keep the fat on it and it adds to the flavor and it's just this really decadent uh, meal that you're having. Chardonnays like that, that have like heaps of oak, heaps of butter, heaps of that sort of flabbiness to it, I'm not about. This is a much better example of it for me. Uh, that citrus comes through and sort of picks up the ass a little bit, but it does still have that creaminess and sort of oak to it. Pretty cool, I'll have six bottles of that one. I'm really coming around on Chardonnay, which is surprising. It feels like a little bit too early in my life to be getting into it. What orchard rave have I been to? Like there is some, like there is stone fruit having a party that I want, I want tickets to. I'm gonna end up, this may be, like I'm four for four at the moment, 12, 12, 12 and 12. Uh, it looks like mango nectar, hell dude, it smells like mango nectar. Okay, if that first one was party juice, this is even more so. That is ridiculous. That tastes like fruit juice, like yeah, 12. $38 magic basket range number at plus 0.3% maybe for inflation. So I'm gonna say $42. It's not even bitsy, it's just fucking thick. I'd say it's 100% Zabibo. I think it's great. Uh, whoa, cheeky bit of mouse in that back valve. Just, just a cheeky bit, just a cheeky bit. And you know what? I'm gonna buy 12 anyway. Like so many people come into the bar at work and I'll talk to them about natural wine and they'll be like, yeah, natural wine sucks. And I'm like, I agree to a certain extent. I understand what you're saying because if you get a bad bottle of natural wine, it could put you off forever because like they can be absolutely abhorrent. This is not that. This is what you should be trying to get when you're getting into natural wine. So if you haven't had it before, hop into Sometimes Always and pick this up because this is sick. This is juice. I reckon I might go mousey. I reckon once once the boys come back here, there might be a mouse here. But I don't think it takes away from the quality of the wine that I'm enjoying right now. I think if you're gonna open a bottle of wine, drink it real quick. Drink it real quick. And number six. Fuck, is this sparkling? It looks sparkling. I've been fooled before, Lockie. I've been burned before. We don't get enough sparkling wines from the guys who sometimes always. This could be the moment that I do six for six, 12 in a row. Let's have a look. It's looking like the color of Riesling. Oh, pretty. Again, it smells like really good Chardonnay, but a lot more restrained and lighter than the first one. It smells sweet and Riesling-like. I think my favorite sort of white wine is a nice off-dry German Riesling, and that's what that smells like to me. Not sparkling. Oh! How's the acid? Damn. And it tastes like that kind of fake banana flavor, but I mean that in a really good way. Like you know, those lolly bananas, that's what it tastes like. I really think this is that, got, I think I've got that Shannon vibe there, which is that green, apple-y, nutty, little bit of honey. Everything's quite delicate. Delicate in a Chardonnay way, but with a slight twist. It, on the nose, smells super sweet, as I've just covered, but then on the palate, the sweetness is still sitting there in the background, but then you've got the acidity, you've got the citrus, you've got all of the things that you're looking for in a nice Riesling. Far out, I mean, absolutely. Absolutely treated. Holy shit, that's awesome. Uh, this is really high quality. Like, then the crackling acidity, uh, perfectly well made, straight down the line, classically uh, executed. Um, a white wine of medium body, medium weight, high acid, um, glorious finish, stupid amount of length. Um, and at that, I, I, I wouldn't personally part with like hundreds of dollars for it. Um, I'd part with a moderate amount, like a, a high quality moderate amount, like 40, 50 bucks uh, is where I would expect this to come in. And if it's any less than that, it's a bargain. But that is the first time ever that I've bought 12 of every single wine on here. And I think for all very good reasons and many reasons that I think we're gonna have to debate amongst the rest of the team. So we'll see how we go. All righty then, boys. What did we think? It's time to go on a fucking picnic is what I thought. These were sick. I would take all of these on a picnic, that's correct. I actually, uh... Fucking most gangster picnic I've ever been on. Uh, yeah. I, I have straight 12. What? I had straight 12s. So I'll buy 12. This is the first time it's ever happened to me, but I'll buy 12 of every single one of these, and I'm happy to justify it. Turn to number one. Yeah. Uh, absolute picnic pinot at its finest. Yeah. 100%. Natty Red Juice. I had 12 for $35. I had uh, 65 and 12. I originally had four, but now I want 12 and I want it at 40 bucks. 80, mm. 50 bucks. Yeah. Murder or kill. Dude, yep, classic. Yep, of course it is. You uh, know what? Yeah. 
You know what's something I've been throwing out a lot lately that's really been pissing off my mates? I've been saying this exact phrase. Tell you what, mate, dollars to dollars. I don't know if you can tell the difference between Pinos coming out of Big Dealer Valley in Tasmania lately. Like, <laughs> put them both in front of me. <laughs> I've been saying that. It really annoys my mates. Really? Uh, that's yeah, so look, good. Uh, Told you. Uh, Told you, Ren. Murdoch Kill, uh, in the hands of Michael Downer, who has, is time and time again one of the great winemakers in Australia of the new age. Uh, this is more hands off than I've expected from him. Rather excellent. Um, there's no yeah. doubt about it. Uh, mm. If you want to try top end Adelaide Hills Pinot at not a bad price, yeah. go for it. Bro. Yeah. All right. One number two. Okay, mm. this is one of those ones when I first smelt it, I was like, I'm going to hate this. Mm. I'm going to fucking hate this. And then as I continued to taste it, I was like, actually, it's not that bad, eh? Whereas Spino, you're not- 43 bucks. 43, lucky. Wow, okay. I'm okay, that's cool. 48, I'm impressed. That Trash. is, that is amazing. That's a hunter. Oh, that's dude, hunter. that is hunter, and it's preservative free, no SO2, motherfuckers. That is wow. not your dad's wine, but it's your dad's wine. Yeah, that confusing. is amazing. I haven't seen these guys' wines for a long time. Well, like we we years. had we had one while you weren't here. We had one with when uh, other Henry was on the show, and yep. we loved it. Um, and this kind of holds up exactly the same as how much we enjoyed the other one. That's uh, really phenomenal. cool. Phenomenal. Some of the best stuff I've seen come out of New South Wales. That is some of the best Shiraz that I've seen come out of New South Wales. Yeah. Damn. That is crazy. Better than their performance of Game 3 of Origin, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to date this episode. Topical. 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 It's not topical. This is going to come out in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wine number three. Mm -hmm. It's great to have some Bordeaux style, mm -hmm. uh, ripe, jammy, tannic reds. Um, I wanted to pay 80 bucks for it. It was Eight, and it's epic. 80 and 12. Uh, I liked this one slightly more. So by that definition, I had to have one less bottle and five less dollars. So it was three for 38. <laughs> <laughs> Henry's logic. I yeah. Like <laughs> uh, Lockie, what is it? Wah, wah, wah. Really? Tempranillo Syrah, baby! Yeah, Syrah, that Syrah. is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Damn, that's a buy. Castillon. Uh, so that is that is the the one of the main what, main home. It's 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 a, a, a primary place to grow some of the greatest Tempranillo on the planet. Um, it makes total sense. The Syrah, that's a new one for me. I didn't realize they had a lot of Syrah. I didn't even realize they could blend it. I didn't realize that was a thing. Yeah. Well, they haven't declared uh, region on the label, so they can do whatever the fuck they want, I guess. Perhaps. I haven't, yeah. Yeah. I haven't got time right now. I'll do it off camera, but I'll explain how like the Spanish Syrah movement can be confused with Cabernet a lot. And that's not on that's not you. That's not on you. I understand. I remember when I was making the same mistakes growing up. You'll get there one day, champ. Uh, yeah, look, if you want, like... <laughs> you just champ me, bro. <laughs> yeah, and you're paying me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now now we're on to my half of the lineup where I yeah. start to go, boom, hell yeah. I ended up with six for 40, which is probably the most Chardonnay that I've bought. Yeah, um, true. Or 45 and 12. Uh, 17 and 12. Mm. No, Ooh. yeah. Could be. Yeah, it could be Sean Smith. Could could be. Be. Yeah, be Smith. Should. Yeah. Tapa Napa. Oh, nice. OG. The Tears Vineyard as well. Yeah, this is excellent. One and a half meter spacing, closely planted um, uh, Chardonnay. What an amazing, amazing wine. Yeah, no, uh, uh, incredible history um, mm. for, for Tapa Napa. Like I think uh, this is Brian Crow's little brand. Yeah. And he yeah. is, you know, was probably one of the pioneers of the Adelaide Hills as a actual region. Um, but this is exactly what you expect. It's an old school style done exceptionally really well. well yeah yeah 100 percent. if you like chardonnay drink that yeah this was party juice hey yo yeah so at this point of the tasting i'd already gone through 12 12 12 and 12 and i was like Can't not be. a chance not a chance there's no <laughs> way you look at it you go Whoa. mango nectar and then i smelled yeah. it and i was like mango nectar and i was like i really really like mango yeah, nectar. <laughs> yeah 12 straight off the bat it is a bebo 110% or fucking musk chardonnay or whatever that shit is. I was saying that when you're smelling it, it's like being in a candy store and it smells like all the different sort of lollies in there. And then someone might've just taken a little poo in the corner. <laughs> and that's what this wine <laughs> smells like. <laughs> but uh, you don't need to worry about it because there's yeah. lollies everywhere. Uh, 55 bucks. Yeah, this peach zappo of a wine, I want uh, 12 for $42. I said 20 bucks ambitiously. Oh, 20 I said, bucks? I, I think 20 it's, bucks, it's five dollars. Let's go in. I think, it's, I think it's worth more than that, but I said, oh, I would buy 12 at 20. I mean, I'd buy 12 at $2, but it's not going to cost that either. <laughs> anyway. um, clean sleep, though. Well done. Yeah. What are we at? I apologize. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. 
Oh, it's Tidy Town. Love it. Little Brunswick Wine Co. This is a little side project. Uh, Tidy Musket. Town. There um, we go. Moscato yeah. Giallo. Uh, yeah, you were close. It's brighter, brighter Musket. We, we weren't held that against you. Uh, like I, t I tell you what, I tried this probably like six months ago. Um, we, I, these guys reached out and um, we actually bought a bunch of wine from them. Um, and it was looking a little bit mouthy. Uh, but mm. it's actually cleaned up heaps in bottle over some time. And it's like one of those things about mousiness that I've seen it over time yeah, it kind of like evaporate dogs. in bottle. Um, and this looks fucking delicious. Yeah. I would drink the shit out of this. Yeah. Yum, yum, three yum. of us, all three of us would drink the shit out of this. And we, we tend to be a little bit narky on mousiness as well. Like I obviously didn't sting it for it. Nah. 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 It's a delicious wine. It's a really, really good it's wine. It's like $26. 26 bucks, yeah. <laughs> yeah bucks Don't even that. think about it. What are you That's even it. doing considering yeah. it? Thank Tax you. returns probably come in by now. Just spend it all on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was so good. <laughs> okay, stop. Uh, and it, last and one of the lineup. Yes. Uh, goddamn. You love goddamn, this. Goddamn. God damn, this was good too. I think we got two great different expressions of Chardonnay. Um, yeah, I loved it. I wanted 12. I would pay 60 bucks for this. 60, I was 48. Yeah, 12 for 40. 35. That's pretty sick. What? It's another medal. No way. No way. Amazing. Oh, amazing. Two ton Tazzy. Yeah, two ton yeah. Tazzy. Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby, man. Um, yeah, 100% he... Shardy, not Shannon. Not Riesling. Not Riesling. <laughs> not, not from the hills. But God yeah, look, uh, honestly, this whole range of his like $35 um, shard, like range of this like two ton Tassie thing, yeah, there's a Riesling that's off dry, it's Belter. There's a Pinot that's, you know, just as awesome as this. This is fantastic. You can spend more with him and get some crazy good gear, but maybe one of the, Shit. maybe honestly, one of the greatest value producers in Australia, because that's fucking immaculately. For yeah, $35, for 30, holy shit. Or something. It's that's pristine. Very nice. It's pristine. What, wow. What's one of the lineup? Oh, fuck it. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I would definitely go there. Out of, the, out of those two, I would have and to go... I, like, I put forward that out of all of them. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, Murdoch Hill, let's go. Murdoch like, Hill, Murdoch. That, that's awesome. That is really good. Yeah, I, red juice. So, I'm really happy that I came back in and tried it after it opened up because it looks gorgeous now. We got party juice. We got value... Like, we got absolute value Spanish temp Shiraz, Uh And then we've got some epic Pinot and Shard that's like at another fucking what, level. What? Lockie's picking these wines pretty well. Yeah. He's doing all right. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks again, guys. See you next week with maybe if it's as good as this or any better. Holy shit. That would be nice. Ciao. Bye.